Hi there, today I want to talk about how to harness social media for creativity in science and also what are some of the pitfalls and risks. Basically social media, the plus, the minus and some solutions. First, some four points that are important to keep in mind and to think about in terms of social media and creativity. First one is, and probably most important one, is diversity of input. Now creativity is about making connections between things that are already there and these connections need to be novel and useful. And it follows from that that you can only make these connections between something that you work on and something different if you get inputs from different directions. And for that social media are actually great because they are a constant barrage of different inputs. On social media, depending on who you follow and how your timeline is managed, you can really get a wide range of different inputs of topics. And these can all be used to connect with the problem that you're currently working on and potentially coming up with new solutions. And that leads to creative output. And I think this is one of the best uses of social media if properly employed. The second point that uh, I've recently experienced as a very positive point is using social media as a sounding board for ideas that you have. Now this is not for everybody because it requires you to post some of your ideas to the world and see how people respond to it and not everybody will be comfortable uh, with doing that and I certainly wouldn't do this for every idea that I have either. But I found that quite rewarding because when you're not quite sure if an idea is good and you just put it out there and you see an enthusiastic response of the people that interact with your post, that can be incredibly motivating and it has been for me. So recently I did that and um, about an idea that I wasn't so sure about that I had in the shower and when I came back later in the day there was a fantastic response and that really motivated me to look more into this topic and write it up as a paper, which has since been published. But I doubt this would have really happened had I not had that rather enthusiastic feedback from social media. Besides this, it was also important that right when I had that idea, I wrote it down. So unless you are an active and avid note taker, which I am not, then also this idea can just be gone by the end of the day when you get home. But this way it made me put it well down as a note on social media, on X in this case, and then it was also captured as an idea. So this is another useful way to think about that. The third way social media can be important for creativity is that it's a marketplace for collaboration. And this has happened to me several times now when I post an idea or a comment on social media and people interact with that post and I sometimes am contacted by people, do you want to write a paper on this together? because I find this idea fascinating and I've also been recruiting basically co-authors on social media when I said like I'm currently writing a paper on this, are you interested in this? And this has also led to connections with people, new connections with people and that can also lead to more creative output. The fourth point is social media posts can be actually an expression of creativity themselves because it makes you think about how do you share your results, what stories do you tell, what narrative do you use, what pictures do you use, how do you basically wrap that information so it's interesting to other people and that is a creative act in itself. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. So these are all the positive aspects and I believe they are real, but there's also a flip side and it's important to think about that as well. So let's go through these points. The first point is that interactions on social media tend to be often rather shallow. There's like a like or just a two word response and often this lacks sort of the depth to really give you meaningful input. And also engagement can be low, on most posts engagement is rather low and that can be sort of viewed as a downer. Especially when you don't have a large following on social media already, you may feel like you're just shouting into the void and nobody listens to you and that can be demotivating. The second point is negative interactions and the fear of negative interactions. I have rarely experienced anything like that but um, there are definitely other examples and having this negative interaction can also be a real downer and can be a demotivator and therefore kill off creativity. The third point is also real, it's information overload. Social media are basically famous for that, it's just this constant barrage of information which can also be positive if you can tease out pieces, bits and pieces that are useful to you but more it's also just an overwhelming never-ending fountain of information. Most of it is maybe not so relevant and that can also make you tired and um, not be a source of creativity. And then finally social media are also an echo chamber so you are very unlikely unless you actively do it to get information that's radically different from the people that you from the people that are already around you anyway. So this means there is a limit to the novelty of the input that you receive this way. 
So given all these positives, but also the negatives, how do you navigate this? Well, first of all, you don't have to be on social media. But even if you are on social media, you don't have to be on social media all the time. You can limit the time you spend on social media and limit your engagement with social media to certain times of the day or um, time in absolute in an absolute sense spent on social media. This is you know, relatively straightforward to do. And in this way, you can limit some of the negative effects like feelings of being overwhelmed or feelings of anxiety, seeing other people's success and all that. You can just basically limit the time you spend on social media to defined periods of time. Myself, not very good at that, but I think the, the path for this is clear. You can also, for example, switch off notifications, which I typically have. The second very important point I think I feel that people are not using effectively is curating your feed. You can actually curate the timeline that you see in uh, quite interesting ways. For example, you can choose words to exclude. You can, of course, block people or silence people that give non-helpful feedback. And so there is quite a lot of what you can do to your timeline. And of course, also who you follow and who you want to see information from is super important. So it's in your control, but it also takes effort to have in the end a, a timeline that actually fosters creativity rather than stifling it. And the third point is, of course, think carefully about what you share. I don't think I share all ideas I ever have on social media. I share maybe ideas where I'm not so sure if they're good to just have sort of a, a <laughs> like a test to see how they will be received. When I have an idea and I, I'm convinced this is an awesome idea, I just work on it and I don't necessarily share on social media all the time. I do that then more in a more protected space like within the lab group. So it's very important that you know also the boundaries of social media, so avoiding some of the negative consequences of oversharing. So with this in mind, I think social media have a very good role to play in creativity and creative output in science if properly used. It's of course not the only input for creativity. There are very many others, but I also think it is one possible one if this is your cup of tea and if you're interested in this sort of interaction on social media in the first place. Many people are not and this is fine. For me, it's definitely been an interesting route and I've um, gotten lots of input from social media and so maybe this is also for you. You can try it out in a self-experiment and if it works, then great. If it doesn't work, just leave it. So maybe it also works for you. And with that, thanks for watching this video. Good luck with your social media endeavors and see you next time. Bye.